the Canadian border. Look how beautiful that is. We thought we'd share it with you. We got to be careful where we walk. Look at this. Look at these holes over here. Dang. That bomb in the car. It's too cold for her. Yeah. Isn't that unbelievable though? End of April, still all that snow. We thought we'd run up here real quick this afternoon, show you the sights and sounds of Washington before we get back down to that house and go to work. Well, why don't we, uh, we'll see them down at the house then, huh? There we go. Cool. We'll see you then. Hey gang, it's Paul with Stud Pack. We're back here on our Washington State rental upgrade. That's what we're gonna call it. In our previous video, you saw that we did a lot, gang. We got the floor ready. We pulled all the staples, swept it, cleaned it, put the plastic down. We started sanding and priming a lot of the bare wood, removed all the casing, got the appliances out of here, and we are ready to start laying floor today. This house is just over a thousand square feet. The goal is to get it completely done. My brother is here today to help us. He brought us this cool Delta table saw. That's gonna be great. We didn't have to go rent one or buy one. He also brought us a miter saw, air compressor, nail gun. He had his car full of tools. So we super appreciate that. That's gonna help us out a ton. So let me walk inside and we'll show you what we're doing. What are you working on, Rad? Uh, just getting rid of some of these stickers, getting this door prepped for paint. Cool. Yeah. Looks good. Looks like you're doing a good job. Keep it up. Thanks, sir. <laughs> Here's a sample of our flooring. It's 12 millimeters thick, about eight inches wide and about four feet long. So that's gonna make it go super fast. Our plan is to lay three strips from the front door all the way to that back wall, get those perfectly where we want them. Then one team of two can start working that way into the back of the house. Another team of two can start working that way in the living room and the kitchen. So I did a little bit of measuring this morning. It's just like laying out a tile floor. We didn't want a small sliver against this wall or that wall or this one, but by putting this plank in the center of this opening, it gives us a five inch strip on either side and also against there. And that puts a strip right in the middle of the floor, which is gonna look great. So I think we're ready to go. They're all waiting on us. Let's get started. All right, here we go. Alrighty gang, we've been at it for about 
eight or nine hours. We're making great progress. We just have two bedrooms left. Let me show you my setup out here. This is the miter saw my brother brought up here. I knew this was the wrong blade. This is a finishing blade. It does not like this kind of flooring. They make a special blade for this. We'll get that sharpened for him or uh, buy him a new one. Over here on the table saw, I've actually switched to it for my cross cuts with this cross cut jig. I'm so used to my saw stop. This is like working on a postage stamp for me. I gotta put my foot here so it doesn't tip over. I don't have that big paddle switch and the blade crank to raise and lower the blade is opposite than my saw stop. So I'm always going the wrong way. But you can see from the scraps on the ground making great use of the product. When I make a cut, for the beginning of the row, I save the drop for the end of the row. If you've ever done this, you know what I'm talking about. So we've been doing that. Again, making great use of the product. But you know what? These guys haven't let me in the house all day. I've been stuck at the saw being the cut guy. <laughs> That's true. You've been out here for a long time, but you're doing, you're doing great. You're doing all a good right. job. Can I, uh, can I check it out? You want to see the fruits of your labor? I'd love to. Come on. All right. Oh, this looks awesome. Check that out. All right, so let's start right here. Most flooring is just a picture of the wood applied to the product. And it's the same thing here. And we found that there are seven different pictures. So we sorted them by all the ones that are the same. See these two? They're exactly the same. The last thing you want is to put these two adjacent down your hallway or even end to end. Your eye will pick it up. So we spent a lot of effort making sure that we jumble these up. And the other thing we're doing, we're jumbling them up between all the boxes. We're not working out of one box and going to the next box. If it's a different die lot, it mixes it all up. The one time you forget to do that and you have two side by side, it's not gonna be under your couch. It's not gonna be under a rug. It's gonna be right in the middle of the hall where you see it every single day and you're reminded of it. Let's walk back here and go in the kitchen real quick. Remember, just two days ago, this had a thousand staples in it. Now it's got this beautiful new floor. Even ran the floor back into the dishwasher. Nobody ever does that. Let's walk back into the hallway. Now what we found and what you saw in the videos was when the doorway is parallel to your run, we're simply notching it like this. And then when you put this piece in, also notched, clicks in and falls back over. All the doorways that are parallel to our run so far, we've had a seam here, so it made it easier. We haven't yet run into one where we had to notch it this way, but all the others are notched the other way. Let me show you what I'm talking about. When you come down the hall, these doorways are perpendicular to the run of our flooring. So what we did, we put a notch in this one and slid it under. My boys were going ahead of me with a jam saw, putting the blade on a scrap piece of this and undercutting all these jams. Now we made the decision to put in new base and new casings. And we also made the decision to put the floor in first, put our casing on top of it, and then our baseboard. Just works easier for us. Most of the time, you're already gonna have your casing, but it's no big deal. You just undercut your casing when you undercut your jam. And for me, door openings are the most critical part of installing this type of flooring. Because what you usually see is a big gap right here in this corner. Now, look, look at our casing. See how nice that's gonna be? We're not gonna have any holes anywhere because we took the time to undercut this measure and notch everything. And a lot of the times you see the jam is cut a lot higher than the flooring. Yep. So there's a big gap. Right. But that's very tight up against it's, the flooring. It's perfect. So what we did in this little closet, we put in this course, we put in this course, then I notched this one with a seam right here in the doorway. It doesn't matter where it is this way, as long as it's somewhere in this doorway. Once we had this piece in, we took this piece and we slid it in. And then once this was in, we could take this piece on the other side and slide it in under the frame, just like you saw in the video, and it works out great. Did exactly the same thing right here on this doorway. That one's got a U-shaped notch in this single piece. And there's our seam on this one, where we put a piece in from this side and a piece in from that side. All right, this first bedroom off the hall is all done. Not too exciting in there, pretty basic, just a square room. So we're working our way down the hallway and we're getting into this area where we have look, what looks to be like a 45 degree. Now, I say what looks to be, if you were to take a piece of wood, cut it out of 45 on the saw, put it on here, it may not be. So we gotta make sure to measure that. I've run into that before. But once we get past here and these two doorways and this angle and get into these bedrooms, we'll be able to fly. But it's running late, so we need to get started and get as much done as we can today. <sighs> We did have a coffee break, super appreciate that, but it is wearing off. 
We're tired, but we're gonna keep going. All righty, gang. Our goal today was to finish this house. We almost made it. It's getting late, but I feel pretty good about today. We can easily finish this tomorrow. And this hallway kind of ate our lunch. This hallway was an enigma. It had every challenge that you could face installing this type of flooring. Right here, this is a built up corner. You can see right here how it flares out. I don't know if you can get that shot. Yeah. I actually had to make this piece twice. It snapped right here. But it came out great on that side and then here got a little bit of a chip out but that's all right just like i showed you on that hall closet look at that when i put the casing up it's going to be beautiful and the baseboard will easily cover right there this bathroom door is pretty straightforward but this off angle here kind of crazy you saw that this was a one trip to the saw cut right that was kind of complicated this little triangle i had to cut was three trips to the saw just snuck up on it made it perfect over here in the master bath one problem that we see a lot is when the door is shut you either see the tile from the bathroom out here or you see the wood in the bathroom so we had to put this little one inch strip right here so we didn't have that problem and we actually glued it since this is such a high traffic area and that won't come apart so a lot of challenges in this one right now we're gonna go home and shower and get some rest and we'll see you tomorrow <laughs> Alrighty, gang, we finished that floor, came out beautifully. We had 10 boxes left over. Hopefully we can return that stuff, get some money back. But we're gonna hop right into our door casing right now. We're gonna put casing up before base. That's the process. Nice, simple, one by three MDF casing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you our system. I made this little block. This rabbit in the edge is a quarter this way, and it's a quarter this way. And then I made a little wider rabbit a quarter inch deep and probably three quarter inch wide. And we're gonna use this to mark our door frame and then we're gonna use it to install the casing so the reveal is always the same. This is a reveal. Quarter inch is popular and so is 3 16 and we're using quarter inch on this house. First step, grab my block. I just got a left and a right marked on it to help me out. So it's nestled right in those two rabbits. So I'm gonna come up on top, make a mark with my pencil. It's that line. And now what we're gonna do, measure from the floor to that mark for our two side casings. All right, so this one is 81 and an eighth. Let's check the other side, and it's the same. Now that we know our length, we went out to the saw, cut our casing, and we're not doing a miter here. We're gonna show you that detail here in a second. I'm gonna grab the block, put it like that, and it establishes the reveal. Now they make plastic versions of this that have all the different reveals on them. It's worth looking up if you do this a lot, but I just make my own. So once you have it in place, you're ready to nail it off, just like I put that one there. And then you'll notice that I always hold the gun perpendicular to my work. I never hold it parallel to the work. That's because these nails, when they come out of here, they can go left or right, but they never go this way. They always go left or right. If you do this way, there's a chance that nail's gonna come out and blow that out. You'll greatly reduce that if you hold the nail gun perpendicular to the line of work. Let's finish nailing this one up and we'll get that other side. All right, now that our two sides are on, let's put the top on. The detail we're going for is at the top. It's gonna to overhang the sides by half an inch. So all we did, we pulled the measurement from the outside of the casing, it's 37. The piece we cut is 38. That'll give us half an inch overhang on each side. We're gonna put it right there, measure half an inch and nail it up. All right, that's the look we're going for. We have eight more doors to do, about 15, 16 more sides. So we're using a 18 gauge, one and a quarter inch nail to connect the casing to the jam. Once we're all done, we'll switch to a two inch nail and then somebody will just come back and attach the casing to the framing. All right, buddy, you ready to measure all these and get them done? Let's do it. Let's we only do got it. like what, eight? Yep, it'll go fast. All right. All right, I'll be the cut guy. Y'all measure and install. Let's do it. Awesome. 
It's the next day. Yesterday you saw us finish the laminate flooring. We got all the casing up and made good progress on the baseboard, but we ran out of gas last night. So we got in here this morning and started on this hallway. Now this hallway, I think there's 17 pieces of base in here. This hallway takes longer than any other room of the house. It's the smallest room, but that's how it goes. We have these, this weird angle here it was like 27 degrees or something on the miter saw. Little piece there. All these outside corners, we did a miter just like that. See how nice that came out? But on the inside corners, since it's such a simple profile, we just did a butt joint. Oh. <laughs> We just did a butt joint like that. You know, and I have something to say right here, Dad. This little tiny piece, I've been in apartments, I've been in houses where they don't even put that little guy in. There's some in our house and they're missing. Yeah, they just either forget about them or they just go, ah. Yeah, the painter will take care of it, right? Yeah. So I think we're almost done. Oh, look, <laughs> there's always some you forget. I did the back one, but I forgot those two. All right, we'll knock those out. Let's show what we did in the kitchen, huh? All right, so in the kitchen, we were gonna put quarter round on the kick to cover the gap between the flooring and the toe kick. But that toe kick was trashed. We decided to use some of the base. We actually had to rip it because it was too tall and essentially cover the toe kick. And that looks so much better right there. Yeah, we made our own toe kick. Yep, we base. did, we did. Base kick. And then come over here on the side. This is what we had to do to just to trim it all out. Typically don't put base on the sides of cabinets, but this is such a thin profile, it worked out really well. So all that's left is the three bedrooms. They go pretty quick. One, two, three, and the closet. So I say, I'll start cutting these, Jordan. You want to nail off the hallway and we'll knock this out in about an hour. All right, all right. I got my gun. There we go. Let's do it. And we're fired up. All the base is in. That means all the finished work is done. Check it out over here. Remember, we were saying our base is half an inch thick. Our casing is three quarter. Your base is always thinner, so you have this reveal. If they were the same thickness, it would look odd. While we're looking at this right here, you can see what it looks like before it's caulked. I had this inside corner here, and the one on the other side kind of gave me some fits, but it came out pretty good. If this had been a 45 degree turn, then all those cuts would have been 22 and a half degrees on the miter saw. And those are already preset on the miter saw. You can, yeah. you can snap right to 22 and a half. Yeah, and I was using the bevel because this is such a tall base. But this is like a 40 and a 50. So these miters were 25, and those were 20, and I had the same thing out here. No bevel gauge, none of that, so it took some time to get it right. But that's done. And while we're speaking of tips and tricks about finished carpentry, you may have noticed this closet door in one of the previous shots. You see this big gap right here? You might have seen that and said, oh man, these guys are hacked, so that's a mistake. What's going on? That's not the stud pack way. Let me show you what's happened here. Use my combination square. See how much that wall is off right there? About a quarter of an inch and four and a half inches. If the base follows the wall, then you're gonna notice that this is crooked, especially when you have parallel lines and 90 degree lines on the floor. Your eye is gonna reference this to all these lines. So we intentionally make this square on an unsquare wall. So in order to make this base wrap around a wall that's out of square, you need some more precision tools and you need a lot more time. We don't have either one right now. So it's a lot easier to just make these cuts 45, trick the eye into thinking everything is square and we'll fill this in with caulk. We had the same exact thing happen on the kitchen. Let's go check it out. So this one's actually finished and you can really see what we're talking about. It's got one application of caulk. It's gonna shrink. We'll come back with a second layer right there. But you can already tell how nice that's gonna look. See how square that is? Check out that wall. It's a quarter inch out of square, about the same as that closet. Yeah. And when you come in the front door and walk down this hall, you're not gonna see a crooked piece of base. You're gonna see a square piece of base and your eye is gonna be tricked into thinking that this is square also. So sometimes finished carpentry isn't about making precise cuts, it's into tricking the eye into making you think it's all precise. 
All right, so we're back here in the living room, right where we all started. We can really feel the equity in this house going up. Right here, you can see the casing detail we're doing. Looks beautiful. Got our new baseboard sitting right on top of our new floor. It's a beautiful day outside. We're gonna keep working, but we're gonna switch gears into finished carpenters and start prepping this place for paint. So go out to your workshop, grab a piece of your favorite molding, trim out that like button for us so it looks beautiful, smash it, drop us a comment, ask a question, and subscribe if you haven't already. We would super appreciate that, and we'll see you guys on the next one.